Hi everyone, this is Stephen Dempsey and I want to show you how to easily add a grungy black and white look to your photo using On One Photo Raw 2018. For this tutorial I'm using an image I captured in Seattle a while back. The light drama and textures make it a perfect candidate for black and white. So let's head over to develop. The highlight recovery slider has uh, been much improved in my opinion in 2018. So um, when I move that all the way to the left we can see that a lot of that uh, detail has been recovered and I'm going to push the shadows up a little bit um, so I'll have something to work with when I get into effects and also the structure although I'm usually fairly uh, subtle about it I'm going to be pretty aggressive about it for this particular um, look and also uh, you can see that a lot of the detail is, has just been um, pulled out even further and then the haze um, that will also bring more detail but it also makes the color a little funky I'm not too worried about that because I am going to uh, make this black and white so it's not going to matter uh, the other thing that I want to do before I go into effects is I want to straighten out these converging lines here um, that kind of keystoning and we can achieve that by going to show more and transform and I'm going to work with the vertical slider and uh, about there looks good to me. Uh, go up to the crop tool and crop out the black at the bottom that is uh, there as a result of that transformation and hit the enter key and that looks good so let's head over to effects. The first thing I'm going to add is a black and white uh, effect so we'll hit filter and black and white and uh, I would usually spend some time working with the sliders on this, but for the sake of this tutorial and time, I'm just going to hit auto. And that looks fine to me. Okay, the next thing I'm going to add is a dynamic contrast. And usually uh, the default is uh, pretty workable for me, but because, again, of that grunge look that we're after today, I'm going to go to preset and go to grunge contrast. Uh, for this and uh, the only adjustments I'm going to make are to the whites uh, I want to bring those down a little bit uh, say about there and blacks I'll bring up a little bit to about there and that looks good to me now the, the photograph lo is looking a little bit crispy to me so um, I could uh, fix that by bringing down the medium details you can see that that actually uh, does a fairly good job but I'm actually going to add a glow the glow gives me a little bit of diffusion and also gives me a little contrast and overall I kind of uh, like the look of it so I'm just going to use that instead of that uh, mid uh, adjustment in the previous filter so for this I'm going to go up to about um, let's see about there and for the halo I'll bring it up to about here. I just eyeball this filter. Um, you know, if I sat down and studied it and, and figured it all out exactly, um, I'd probably be a little bit more precise about it, but um, I, I like how it looks right now, so um, I'm just going to work with that. So next I'm going to add um, a toner for the black and white, and I do that by another black and white filter. Uh, I'm not going to mess with the sliders here. I'm going down straight down to the toner and I'm going to choose antique yellow which is my favorite and then bring the overall uh, opacity down to about there that looks pretty good maybe bring it off a little bit more than that that's good so the bright areas are looking a little bit uh, flat to me so I'm going to adjust that by adding a tone enhancer the tone enhancer to me is like the uh, Swiss Army knife of uh, filters. It uh, performs so many different functions and I usually stack a lot of them in, in photographs using them for all different purposes. So in this case I'm just going to use the curves and because I want to just boost the lights only I want to uh, put a stop right there in the center so that when I move the curve um, at the top here it's not going to affect the blacks and the darks. So I'm just literally affecting the brights so that looks pretty good to me I'm actually going to pull down the opacity slightly and I also noticed that this area here which is like a shopping trolley with blankets and all that stuff that's kind of blowing out so I'm going to mask out that uh, boost I just did um, I have a, a masked out um, or a paint out brush selected here and it's just at 100% and I'm just going to punch that right out there 
and uh, you can look at the mask and see that it's just literally that and it doesn't have to be precise. So that is just that little bit of a boost here. Um, I think that works pretty well. Finally, I'm going to add a um, vignette. And everything has been pretty heavy handed so far on this because of that grunge look. So we're going to go with the big softy and I'm actually going to go from subtle to normal and that makes it even stronger effect. I'll take the feather completely down so I can see exactly where I'm affecting it. And uh, the roundness, I actually want to be a little bit more uh, rectangular in this one. And the size, probably bring it up a little bit and then bring that feather back up. Now that's still way too strong, so I'm going to bring the brightness up and maybe even bring the size down. Um, yeah, about that. That's pretty much it. Um, you can see that the we started with this and we went to this and that's a pretty dramatic difference. And all of that detail has been reclaimed. Um, again, looking at the original, you, you can't see half of, of what the final um, pulled out. So um, have fun with that particular uh, s these settings and I want to give you a little tip before I leave and some of you may know about this and some of you may not so for the benefit of those who don't I'm going back up to the browse module and this is uh, the, a folder of in this case two photographs and on one has uh, created a preview um, a folder cover if you like now, if you don't like this and it doesn't uh, adequately represent the photographs that are inside the folder, you can change it. So you do it by opening up the folder and then right clicking on the photograph that you want uh, for your cover and go down to set directory preview. And now when you go back up to your folder cover, it has changed. And if you don't like that, you can go back and choose another one. And again, go down to set directory preview and you go back up there and uh, you have a new cover. So I hope this tutorial was helpful, and as always, please ask questions if you need clarification. And uh, other than that, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.